It's your boy Chino Kepi, and I just jumped out the porch with Dirty Glow up after. Stay. I was down on my last, she wouldn't text me. Now I'm sitting on the rack, she wanna text me. I see it all. All right, y'all, so we have Chino here off the porch today. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Okay, we gotta talk about your ankle, your foot, <laughs> of course. So, what happened? <laughs> I was hooping, and now I'm finna drop 50. Like, nigga, uh, I was with one of my, uh, one of my partner partners. And like, the game was getting intense, intense. He was like, uh, bet 100. And then my other partner was like, bet 500. And then when we started playing, like, soon the game started, I was finna go stupid. But, you feel me? He really hurt me, the nigga hurt me on purpose. Like, he fucked me up, so shit. I broke my ankle. He ain't broke, though. Well, I don't know if he broke. And you're also on a summer tour right now. So how does it feel to be back touring since we're coming fresh out of like a crazy ass pandemic? I mean, it feel the same. It feel great, but it like, I ain't, it don't feel like nothing changed though. Cause like, this my second tour for real. So it's just same thing, just better So So far, which city has been like the most lit? Oh, uh, which city been the most lit? Wait, Tallahassee? Probably. Where's city been the most lit? I don't even know. <laughs> I be forgetting, like, it be feeling. We be going to so many, so many clubs and shit, but I, I'd probably say Tallahassee. Ty. I think I had a show in Tallahassee. I don't even know. And taking it back to where you're from, Fort Valley, has the current music scene started to progress out there? For sure. <laughs> it's a lot, of, a lot of niggas doing music now. But not even in just Fort Valley, like the whole 478. Like running around and making, you feel me, whatever. A lot of niggas doing music. Niggas hard too. So who is like some artists that we could be on the lookout for there? Oh, I don't want to say no names, cause then niggas gonna feel like, you feel me? Why he ain't say my name? <laughs> why he ain't say my name? And, but it's a lot of them. I feel that. So what do you think it's gonna take for Fort well, what do you think Fort Valley will have to do in order to get like a really big buzz going out there? Everybody get on the same thing, like get on the one little program type shit. And that, that'll be all for real. Everybody just be on the same shit, be on the same shit. So basically like the unity. I mean, you feel me? Yeah, that, but it's just like, yeah, you can say the unity. But then again, I ain't like the unity. Just like everybody just doing their own thing. Like for real, for real, everybody just doing their own thing. So everybody was doing the same thing on a one like little shit. It'd be like the shit go stupid. Are y'all pretty supportive of each other out there? You feel me? I, yeah, they be trying to be. <laughs> I mean, you feel me? I don't be knowing. Like niggas are act like they support you, but they don't support you for real. But I be showing love to nigga though. Like. <laughs> he said no. <laughs> I be showing love to nigga though. Especially nigga hard. Even if nigga ain't hard. If nigga just working, I'ma show love. Just because you working. And I can tell you doing it with a passion. So like I feel like it's so weird that people be scared to show love. Like that you know they mess with your music, but they just be afraid to say like congratulations, this is hard. <laughs> like I don't get that. Niggas be lame. <laughs> Niggas be lame. That's how they be. So I feel like when people think of Georgia music wise, they always think of Atlanta first. So do you feel as though Atlanta has overshadowed the other states in Georgia when it comes to music? Do you feel like since Atlanta is like that music hub, nobody really pays attention to the other states in Georgia? I mean, for sure, but like, it's Atlanta, so I mean. Yeah. <laughs> So you came on the porch, like this isn't your first time. You came on the porch in 2019, almost two years ago. Mm -hmm. And you were an independent artist, but now you're assigned to Alamo. Mm -hmm. How is that? I mean, it's the same. It's just not just like I got people, in, like other people involved, but it's the same. The hustle the same, everything, the grind, everything the same for not just more people involved. Now, how exactly was that transition going from unsigned to a now signed artist? Like shit, it really was just like, you feel me? Like labels be having like the platform to, you feel me? They be having the platform and the power to do some shit, doing that shit independently, you feel me? 
you 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 can do certain shit, achieve certain shit. But just like with the label, like they can just you feel me, I call and your shit doing this or your shit doing that type shit. So it's just like it, it like a partnership, like we just like we using each other. Like they gonna help me and I'm gonna help them. For real, for real. So how was the grind for you like working your way up to being a signed artist? So how was it? Yes. What you mean, how was it? <laughs> or what was it like for you? Like, what were you doing to get recognized by a label? I was just doing me, like just working. I wouldn't really stand no label. Cause I'm already signed to a label, I'm a playlist. So it's like, I wouldn't really stand a label for real. I was just working. And did you feel like a weight was lifted off of you after signing to Alamo? Because you know, when you're independent, you really be doing everything on your own. Not for real. Cause I was independent, but mm -hmm. I had a team. Mm -hmm. So like, you feel me? I feel like weight, it's like more weight got on my shoulder when I signed with the label. But not in a bad way, it's just like, like I said, it's more people involved now. So now it's, it's, you feel me? You can go off your time, but you probably going off of their time too. Or they got their two cents that they can put in. And it ain't no bad thing, cause you can use that shit and run with that shit. And also just coming from the streets, how is it actually adjusting to the different politics that you got to deal with in the industry? When you're in the streets and then you're doing your music by yourself, like you really just doing your own thing. And then you come into the industry, it's the music politics. Like they're telling you, you can't drop this day. You can't oh, do this. Oh, it ain't no shit that. like that. Like, like I can do whatever, like whatever I want to do, whenever I want to do it for real. So I don't really feel me. I don't know how they, they feel for real. And did you have people switch up on you once you officially got signed? <laughs> yeah, for sure. But niggas switched up, like, before I got signed, after I got signed. But that shit just life. Like, you feel me? God gonna reveal everything, all the bad, before something good happened. So they're like, shit, that shit life. You gotta go through that shit. Now, I've seen a lot of rappers, they always come on the porch and say this, that you can't be in the streets and try to pursue your rap career at the same time. What is your perspective on that? I ain't no rapper. I'm an artist. But you feel me? That shit true. Like either you gonna be in the streets or you gonna be, you feel me, doing this shit. Cause you can be you can be doing this shit and still be in the street, but you still gonna, you feel me? It gonna be certain shit you gotta watch out for. Uh, you gotta look over your shoulder. But even if you ain't in the streets and you just doing that music shit. Like you still have to look over your shoulder and shit, cause nigga be hang, nigga be lame, so. Shit, man, it don't matter what you do, nigga gonna hate you regardless. Mm, they don't care who you is, how you doing it. In the streets or not in the streets, you doing it, they ain't doing it, they, they gonna hate you. <laughs> so when you were coming out in 2018, it wasn't <laughs> too many people doing the melodic shit that's going on right now <laughs> but now that is like basically all we hear do you feel like it's starting to become a little bit oversaturated do you believe that now it's just too too many people doing the melodic wave i mean not at all Shit, i don't really be staying like how, what other people do anyway mm -hmm. so i don't even pay attention i don't even like realize that they're doing it but i don't i don't be paying attention to niggas like what they do is what they do and i do what i do it's just who gonna do it better, who gonna make it look good, you feel me? And right now, you know you're doing it better, so. I mean, not, I, I'm, just doing, <laughs> I'm just doing me for, for everything. And so just going back to, I got the chance to listen to your music from like back then into now. And from my observation, I feel as though you cleaned up your melody. <laughs> and so it's giving me heavy on the R&B. <laughs> so what made you want to tap more into the R&B melodies? Like, I can sing, I'm a singer for real. I ain't no rapper, I'm an artist. Like I was singing in, in the choir and shit, like in church. So I really can sing, so it's like, why not sing? I got the looks and I got everything, like, why not sing for real? And speaking of R&B, you dropped a single recently called Fake Love <laughs> back in February. And I want to talk about that because I noticed that in the cover art, there's a girl in a picture with you, but you have her scratched out and mm -hmm. she got devil horns on her head. Mm -hmm. So what was the significance of that? 
Man, like, it's just fake love. Like, everything was fake. Like, it just, like, it don't even make sense to see who the person is and no shit because the person is some bullshit. Everything was fake. You don't even gotta, like, it's just, like, you feel me, with her being her. Like, I feel like women, Nah, I ain't even gonna say uh -uh. that. Yeah, I ain't gonna Don't say be that. trying to put the I ain't even gonna get on it. <laughs> Actually, you know what? You know what? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. With women, what do you feel? Like, women be weird nowadays. Like, I'm 20. So, like, women my age, or like, in my age range, like, they weird. They be on weird shit. Like, you can't fuck with me unless you can buy me this, or unless you got this. But in real life, you ain't never had this shit. And you can't get yourself this shit. So what the fuck I look like trying to get you some shit that you can't get yourself? It just be weird shit. That shit weird. Like, <laughs> I'm your daddy. I ain't your daddy. I, I got a little girl already. I ain't finna play daddy to my little girl and whoever. So basically, if a girl wants to approach you, like, she got to have her own everything. Not even that. I don't even just be caring about what you got. Like, I just like the vibe. Like, if your vibe, then I'm, I'm vibe with you, but shit. If I can't vibe with you, it don't make sense to be Ryan. Do you feel like anybody started that trend of like girls asking for, you gotta give me this, you gotta buy me that? I don't feel like it. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, you said, do I feel like, do I feel like what? Well, Cause you it? said girls like nowadays, they- Yeah, like never... females just in like, you feel me? Just females, like they hear the songs and things. Or they see the, the IG pictures and posts and think they supposed to live how they live. But you got some of these folk that rapping, like these females that be rapping. Like they can say, you can't fuck with me unless you can buy me a burger, you know, you got this. Cause nine times out of 10, they can go get they sell that shit. If you just a, like, you feel me and you got no type of motion or none of that, what the fuck I look like? <laughs> Buying you this shit that you can't buy. It don't make sense. Now you dropped your project Things then changed back in 2020, and the song that was going crazy on that one was Lap Dance. How did that come about? Man, like we was in the studio. Man, we didn't even know how to work the studio for real. It was me and my manager, we didn't even know how to work that shit. Uh, Wine Time sent the beat. I don't know, just like the beat, Jay, you feel me? We were just in there trying to put it together. He was calling the ass and shit, trying to get the shit set up and shit. But once he finally did, like nigga Jay, like went in, like the beat just made me feel a different, like made me feel like a different type of person. So it's just like, well, yeah, it was a vibe. So I watched the visual for it, and of course y'all included the strip club scene. How was, <laughs> how was it with that? <laughs> that shit was hard. <laughs> I don't know who came up with that shit, though. Who came up with that shit? Wait, I don't know who came up with that shit. That shit was hard, though. They really wanted me to like trip when I was walking in the club, though. They were like tripping five. <laughs> the fuck y'all talking about? They told you to trip and fall before the... Like, while I'm walking in, on some funny shit, right? like, yeah. you ain't gonna do no shit like that. <laughs> I feel that. So, with the title, Lab Dance, what made you want to title it that? My diamond, like, diamonds on my neck giving me a lap dance. They dance, you know, diamond dance. So, diamonds on my neck giving me a lap dance, yeah. And when you were recording that one, did you expect it to go up like it did? Uh. I mean, I don't, like, not on no cocky shit, but, like, yeah. Like, I was fucking with, like, I had a show. Like, I was writing a second verse before I went to the show. I'm in the club writing a second verse. I had a show with Stunful Vega and Megan. I was in the club just writing the whole verse. I fucked with it. I know this is, like, so off track, but, like, so now that we can catch you tapping into the R&B, R&B vibes, <laughs> who is, like, an R&B artist that you're listening to right now? Man, Jasmine Sullivan, a lot of Jasmine Sullivan. Uh, Give you a, let me see, who else I be listening to? I think that's it. I thought you was gonna say Brent Fires. Yeah, Brent Fires hard, but, you feel me? I don't just listen to him, but he hard for sure. I listen to like a couple of his songs. Would you like to actually collaborate with the R&B artist in the for future? Sure. Who would you see yourself working with? All on, like anybody that just signed good, just some singing shit, like you feel me, Jamin Sullivan, uh, Givion, cause Givion hard. I I do some shit with Brent too, but is it really just some R and B niggas though? Who? Like is it is it some R and B niggas? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh yeah, Quee for sure. Quee, Quee the hardest nigga though. Quee the hardest nigga with the R&B shit. So shout out to Quee. I, I did some shit with Quee. With Jacquees. Mm -hmm. I saw you had a picture on, I think it was like Instagram. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Yeah, Quee hard. He be, he be goddamn fucking with me and shit. He be showing love and shit too. And just going back to your album, I got the chance to listen to it, uh, Things Didn't Change, and mm. I felt like there was a lot of emotion <laughs> flowing through it. What would you say were some inspirations for you while creating this album? Man, I was just going through life, like, at an at a early age. I was going through life. I, I was broke, I was broke as fuck. I had a babe on the way, you feel me? So, like, having no money and having a child, and like, you feel me, that shit, like, like you feel me, had me doing crazy shit. Like, I, I was really was back on the shit I was on before I started doing that shit. But my partner was in jail, like, his, his son had him died, all type of shit. I really was just going through life. I had to cut my hair off, all, like, cause I really was going through it. Like, I cut my shit off by myself with some drip, I mean, with some scissors. I'm in the bathroom, like, fuck it. Cut my shit off, I just going through life for real, though. And I ain't know how to, like, take this, I ain't know how to, deal with that shit. And how are you able to really like pull yourself out of that mentally? Like the people around me, like they were showing me, like my team, they were showing me like shit. Nigga believe in you, like we believe in you. Like everything we just about off of what we doing, what we say to you, like everything is just like we believe in you. So like if nigga believe in me then shit, nigga I'm believing me. And it was like fuck it, I wasn't doing it now. I was in the streets. I ain't doing nothing there. I got a babe on the way. I got siblings. Fuck it. Time to get some money. Yeah, when you have a kid, they be putting that. That's that, that crazy. <laughs> that's that real pressure. <laughs> like it's like you really got to make something shake because you now you got another one that you have to take care of. Man, it, you ain't living for yourself. Like you, you living for your child when you got a child. You ain't living for you no more. Like that shit over with. You living for your child for real. So everything you do. Like, gonna reflect on your, like, how your child gonna be like. Let's say, like, I'm in a position to be a, uh, like, a big, you know, a multi mean, a multi bean, and I go do some bullshit. I know ain't nobody gonna give my child shit. <laughs> so now my child, you feel me, like, her chances of being, like, coming up, not going through the shit I went through. I don't know, like, but not going through the shit I went, having to go through the shit I went through. Like, she gonna have to go through that shit probably, just because of a decision I made type shit. Feel like you ain't living for yourself no more. Everything you do reflect on how your child future is gonna be forever. You a girl dad too. Yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Girls, like you really gotta be there in their <laughs> life, like all the way, because girls need their dads like Man, crazy. And also, what would you say is like one of the biggest sacrifices that you've had to make throughout your journey? Uh, having to spend time away from my little girl, like, get myself up and coming to Atlanta while she was still in Fort Valley. So it was just like, the sacrifice of not seeing her, that was the biggest sacrifice to me. But she gonna understand when she gets older. Yeah, for sure. She gonna know, <laughs> like, she gonna see it and you'll be able to tell her, like. I mean, she'll, she'll know, like, yeah, <laughs> she'll know. <laughs> And back to the project, who were some of the producers that you worked with on that? Uh, Nash B and Wine Time. I think they were the only two producers. Who? Oh, yeah, Lino. Lino, Lino Loader. That boy hard, too. What's the chemistry like when all of y'all are cooking up together? It depends, because I ain't never really just, like, I don't think I just been in the studio with Lino was cooking up. But, like, when me and Nash in the studio, it's just like, ah, it's crazy. When me and Wine Time in the studio, it's crazy, too. But... It ain't high. It ain't gonna be how me and Nash in the studio. But one time, you feel me? You bring some hard shit out of me too. And when it comes to like working with different producers or just producers in general, do you feel like they can either make or break your sound as an artist? Uh, for sure. If you if you got the right uh, if you got if you're working with the right just person type shit, I feel like they'll help you for sure. And. Besides lap dance, because that's my favorite song. Mm. But what's your favorite song on that project? Man, my favorite song, I can't even really say it, cause I like all of them. But I like Forever. I like Letter to the Streets. I like uh, Hood Lullaby. 
What else I like? It's a lot of shit. I really like all this shit, but <laughs> I'm sure, well, I feel like the whole like that whole project with your heart from top to bottom. And you recently dropped on my last, and I know you just premiered it on Triller as well. Um, what was the inspiration behind that single? Man, like on my last, it just like it you speaks was for itself. You like, was definitely <laughs> venting on that one. It speaks for itself, like. I'm pretty sure everybody done been on their last before. So you know how it feel, like motherfuckers, you think or do certain shit for you, ain't doing shit for you at all. But as soon as you got there, you feel me, get the way you need to be, motherfuckers know you got shit, they when they want to fuck with you. Like motherfuckers chew when they want to fuck with you. When you're on your last, ain't nobody gonna fuck with you for real. You'll have some folk to fuck with you, but everybody ain't fuck with you. Everybody ain't gonna, you feel me, like nah. Like, I'll probably see a nigga, nigga, like, man, here, man, $100. But nigga seen me back then, nigga ain't stand, man, they ain't stand me <laughs> at all. So it just be like, just on my lap. It go for the female, too. The female, <laughs> I, don't, I don't feel like a female will fuck with a broke nigga. You said you feel like a female can't fuck with a broke dude? I feel like they uh, a female won't. Well, I know they ain't. Like, ain't nobody gonna, you feel me? I ain't gonna fuck with you while you broke. <laughs> <laughs> no. Unless they probably know, like, okay, he, at least he got, he got an idea of what he wanna do. I would say, okay, so I wouldn't say that a female wouldn't just mess with you if they you're broke. With you. <laughs> I would Man. say if you're working towards something and, like, say you're an entrepreneur. I'm saying, but let's say, let's say the man only has that, like, vision. Like, he ain't even got it in motion yet. A female ain't gonna sit there and be like, man, I see the same shit you see. I'm gonna wait until you do that. And my man, fuck this nigga, man. I'm gonna go get me a nigga who already got some shit going. And then over with. I'm gonna fuck it with so you. you're an artist, right? For sure. If you dated a female that was like in the creative field, that was like an artist or just somebody. I wouldn't even date no artist. You wouldn't date an artist? I wouldn't date, period, though. Cause like, cause of me, like I don't trust at all. You can be the most faithful person. I ain't gonna believe you. But it ain't nothing, it ain't you, it like, it's that just, I ain't going for it. I don't need to date nobody. Yeah, dating is for the birds <laughs> right now. Like, <laughs> we, yeah, no, uh-uh. But, um, and what emotions were you feeling when you recorded on my last? I was feeling them emotions. Like, I don't been called like broke before by somebody that I love the most. Like, I don't hear it out of my like, you broke, you ain't got nothing going. Nigga, you broke. As soon as you get that shit, man, like, nigga, <laughs> everybody on you. Like, yeah. They forget about all that shit. So, like, it just life. That shit real life. So, now that we have your new singles, you've been dropping a lot of singles, <laughs> like, this year. Um, <laughs> what would you say is next for you? A project, for sure. I got a uh, tape from the job working on. So, I don't really just be working. I don't really just be too much. Like, oh, let's draw this, oh, let's draw this. I just be working. I really be chilling. Nah, let me stop, I be working. <laughs> I be working. I let my team, just, you feel me, do what they do and I do what I do. So, with this new project, is it already done or? Yeah, for sure. Can you speak I be some holding features? that. I just be holding that. I got one feature. Metro Mars, shout out to Metro Mars. If y'all know who Metro Mars is, uh, I think he like 16, but he hard for you. He from Atlanta. He hard though. That's the only feature I got, Metro Mars. So what can we expect with this new project? Damn, what songs on it? You don't gotta tell us the songs if you don't want to. No, but the I gotta, vibe. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta remember. Man, just a whole lot of just showing what I really can do, like showing that I'm an artist, like I'm not no rapper. I can do whatever. I can create however I want to create. For real, for real. And I'm harder than a lot of rappers. Not even on no cocky shit, but I'm like, I see myself being bigger than Drake. Not even on no cocky shit, but me and Drake got the same birthday. So it's like, I gotta be bigger than Drake. Oh shit, you're a Scorpio. Yeah, for sure. Uh, that, that just explained like everything. Oh <laughs> man, I don't know. It's oh. Oh my God, y'all! Oh, yeah. you are—you're a certified lover boy. No, I, don't, I mean, <laughs> but why gotta—you know—keep me out the porch? 
I don't know. It, it depends. Like if I fuck with you, like if I fuck with you, then yeah. But if I don't, I just like the vibe. And how would you say that this new project will be different from the last one that you dropped? It's gonna be harder, even though that was hard. That was the hardest project that I ever dropped, and anybody over here, if motherfuckers go pay attention to that shit, but it's gonna be harder for sure. But it just like you feel me. It just showed that I'm an artist for real. Like I am an artist. Like I can do whatever I want to do. I can create however I want to create, and I really be saying. So if I want to go, you feel me, do a song with Adele, I'm gonna do a song with Adele, and it'll be, it'll be you feel me. And I'm doing all this shit by myself. I don't really need no features, no none of that shit. I just like to work. And you are emphasizing that you are not a rapper. You are an artist. Yeah, for sure. Why do you emphasize that so much? Like, because I am an artist. Like, I can do what I create however I want to create. Like, you can't go in a, a studio and tell me, like, rap this or rap that. Like, I can go in here and rap, sing, or I can go in here and sing, or I can go in here and rap. And I can do it on whatever type of beat I want to do it on. I just create however I want to create. I don't feel like people get to create how they want to create. They just, you feel me? Like, motherfuckers get in there and just do shit. But I ain't gonna get in the studio and freestyle. I'm gonna sit there and write my shit. It might take two, three days for me to write it. But I'm gonna sit there and write it until I'm done with it. So I'm an artist. I, 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 I'm more so on perfecting my craft and perfecting who I am as a person and an artist. Would you say that's a reason, the reason why you don't really drop as much is because you want it to be like quality? I don't even say that because I be working. <laughs> like I be having shit. I just be holding on to shit, just listening to it. But I just be working. I just like to work. Like the more music I got, I never have to worry about it. or when I need to drop this or when I need to drop this. It just like let put this together. Let drop this single. Let drop this single. Or let put the project together. We got a hundred songs or however many songs to choose from and do it. In total, could you name like how many songs you've recorded since this year? Oh, I ain't even gonna count, man. I've been I've been working this shit. I ain't even just been in the studio. But I've been recording some shit, but I be forgetting about that shit. Like I record it and like forget about the whole song forever. So now that we are slowly opening up and you know the tours are getting back to normal, the festivals, all of that, what would you say is really your goals this year as an artist? Mm, my goals, uh, probably the, uh, I just want to uh, be a better me for real. I don't really just be standing out of the shit. I just want to be a better me. Better me, and then when I say that, let me a better person, a better father, a better artist. I just want to better myself. I don't really be stuck. Like if I do shit, like if I go number one, if I get a, a certificate or a reward for this or for that, that'll be cool. You feel me? Thank God for it. But I just want to better myself. I love that for you. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fuck with it, man. Well, with it. And before we wrap up the interview, do you have any last words or shout outs? Man, shout out to my mama. Shout out to Playlist the Label, motherfucker. Shout out to Joy, too. I fuck with Joy. Uh, new music coming soon. Chino Cabin, C H I N O C A P P I N. Every platform. I was down on my last, she wouldn't text me. Now I'm sitting on the rack, she wanna text me. I see it all. I see it.